Hello, my name is Pam Wingate. I have a business called Best Little Quilt House in Texas, and I've been teaching the Statler Basic class at Linda's Electric Quilters in McKinney, Texas for the past couple of years. The project that I want to show you is a cute baby burp cloth and bib that I created using a ply pattern to create the outside edge for the bib and I'll show you how to import a picture and create a pattern to use for the outline of the bib. Alright, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and view my grid. And the first thing we're going to do is work on the, the burp cloth. This project is going to show you how to quickly create a burp cloth using a point-to-point -point pattern. Uh, and for uh, the point-to-point -pat point -point pattern that we'll be using is Janice's swag. Uh, and by definition, we'll have the start and end points on the same plane or horizontal line. And it will a point-to-point -point pattern goes from left to right. Uh, a block, this is different than a block pattern because they usually have the start and end points located in the middle of the pattern where it might be least visible. So apply pattern automatically places point to pet point patterns following the path of another pattern. Patterns placed using apply pattern will automatically connect and sew continuously. Pat point to point patterns are also no longer restricted to straight lines as the apply pattern feature will curve the P2P pattern to follow the path of your selected pattern. So we're going to start, I started with Janice's swag pattern and uh, what we're going to do is um, I've already uh, rotated it and uh, made it smaller so that's we're going to use Janice's swag rotated and small. And as you can see, uh, the pattern size is, is um, uh, relatively small, 0.75 and 0.39. And so I've already resized this, but most patterns will need to be reduced in size. And the size needs to be small but cannot go below 0 0.09 inches. So what we're going to do, first we're going to use repeat pattern. And we're going to place our outline of our burp cloth onto the screen. So this is repeat patterns and it, we're just going to click OK to get it out there. And then what we're going to do is create two echoes by right clicking and selecting echo pattern. The first one should be 0.25 and this will be our cutting line. So we're going to go ahead and click on place echo pattern to do that. There's our echo. And the second one should be a negative 0.5, and this will be our path pattern. So I'm going to select the pattern again, and this time when I echo, I'm going to actually type in a negative 0.5 and say place echo pattern. And there you have your path pattern. So now we're going to go ahead and use apply pattern. And the first thing you need to do is select your point to point pattern. And then we're going to highlight the path, which it already is. And then what we're and then the next thing we'll do is right click and choose apply pattern. And you can see it's thinking about it. And there you have it. There is your uh, pretty little swag um, outline for your your burp cloth. So it's important to remember that the path pattern, if you don't want the actual path pattern to be stitched, you will need to delete it. But in this case, I left it because I think it looks better with the actual path pattern uh, stitched. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to place our cross hatch for trim. And we're going to do that again by doing the repeat patterns onto the CAD screen. And then Let's go ahead and, and reduce it and place it where we about where we think it's going to go. So one of the things I do uh, in order to, uh, a little trick in order to be able to center this uh, uh, precisely, is that I'm going to click on this outside uh, echo and I can see where the center of this pattern is. 
and then I'm going to use point to point line and just draw a, a center line here where that, that center uh, handle is. So there we have our marked our center. Now I can select our crosshatch for trim and you, you can see that Creative Studio is not letting me select <laughs> this pattern here because there are too many of them. It will only let you select the upper topmost, so um, topmost patterns. So what you have to use is the uh, less than or greater than keys for patterns to rotate through them and then you will be able to uh, highlight the pattern that you want. And you can see that I've got pretty close here. The center is um, looks like it's right where it needs to be. So the next thing that we're going to do is use point to point line again uh, and our grid in order to draw the, the vertical lines on either side. Oh, but before we do that, let me go ahead and we don't need this anymore so we can go ahead and delete that. So let's do draw point to point line and again we're going to use our grid and I have it set at 0.25 inches and we're going to draw two sets of horizontal lines and I left click and left click again and then right click to stop it but I use you can see I'm still in point to point line so I'm going to draw multiples of these and I left three quarters of an inch in between in order so that we can place our sashing so that's three of those quarter inch grid lines And let's go over it and we'll do the other side. One, two, three. And using that grid, looks like we. So now we have our vertical lines. The next thing we want to do is place our sashing. I have a couple different sashing patterns and for this one I'm going to go ahead and use the heart one but there's also one for a little boy that you could use and it is it's a sailboat sash but I've I've used this heart border 3 pattern in order to create the sash and I've already created one that is just the right size to fit in this pattern so all we need to do here um, first we need to get out of point to point line select the heart sash and then we're going to use repeat patterns to place it onto the screen I'm going to highlight it and then I am just going to move it into place actually I am going I need two of these so I'm going to go ahead and rubber stamp it and I'll move one into place here and we'll zoom in to make sure that it is accurately placed this and then I want to rotate the second one and before I, re I place it on the other side and just center it there and then all we have left to do is to place either the rattle or for this one it's a little girl we'll place the rattle uh, the baby rattle ribbon is the pattern we're going to do repeat patterns again to place it on the screen this one we'll need to shrink down so that it will fit we are going to rotate rotate it does it look about right a little bit smaller and again I'm going to need two of these so I want them to both be the same size so I will um, rubber stamp it we're going to place one here and I'm using the grid again just to eyeball it this time and make sure that it's centered rotate to place the other one and 
and there you go. That's how easy it is. So now you're ready to stitch out the pattern. I used white thread and a white sateen fabric on the top and either a pink or blue polka dot backing. And then I switched thread colors when I stitched out the anchor or the rattle uh, designs to either blue or pink. So here's the completed project uh, that stitched out. And if you zoom in, or I zoom in, you can also see that I used free motion quilting to stipple around the background, around the anchor or the rattle, uh, but this is optional. And what you can do then is use the outside stitching line to cut out the burp cloth and then stitch binding uh, to match the backing using the stitching line. And that is the completed burp, burp cloth. So now let's talk about the bib. So for the bib, I didn't have a pattern uh, for the outside um, outline. So I used a free downloadable pattern and used the import image feature to draw and draw a sewable curve to create the outline for the bib. So I'm going to show you how I did this. But this can, technique can be used to create all kinds of patterns. You just need to make sure the designs are not copy, copyrighted and are free to use. The first thing we're going to do is create the outside border using a free pattern that I found and the link is in the, the Word document of the project file. So I'm going to be using uh, import image and it's under the file pull down. You want to do import image and then navigate to where you downloaded the pattern and I put mine under digital designs and there it is right there. It's just a JPEG. And you say open, and what it does is it creates a new uh, quilt group, and it has your image here. So in order to make it easier to see the pattern that we're creating, what I like to do is right-click, and you'll get this menu, and you'll and click on image attributes and reduce the image opacity. So that way you can see... Uh, the lines that the uh, that you're creating, and we'll just X out of that. So using draw sewable curve, uh, I am going to create. This is the curve, so you draw draw sewable and curve. I am going to click around our pattern file, the picture, and I am just going to create clicks all the way around. And what this is doing is it's creating curves. Now, if I was trying to create a pattern with that had straight lines, I would use draw sewable point-to-point -point line. But because I have curves on this pattern, I want to use point-to-point -point draw sewable uh, curve because this way it will create both pink and blue nodes inside your. I think I just went past it. Yes, I did, but that's okay. We'll fix it. So uh, if you now you have an outline pattern, if you click on it and select it, what we're going to do is uh, click on the nodes icon. So what you want to do is drag the pink nodes directly over the lines of the picture, and then you want to use the blue nodes to manipulate the curves. And once you have your pattern complete, then what you can do, and it does take a while, but you want to go all the way around it, um, you can select it and say export pattern to CSQ and that pattern will be uh, exported and it will come up in your preview uh, screen. So I have already adjusted all of the nodes on the pattern that I downloaded for the bib. So let's take a look at that. So I have finished fine-tuning my pattern and one of the things that um, I did with this pattern was I squared off the, the bottom uh, edge a little bit more and then I, I had already uh, stitched up a sample and the the overlap part was not big enough so you c the pattern is just a guide. You can make adjustments and uh, just use it uh, as a guideline but it doesn't have to be exactly um, you can make adjustments to it. But once you have it the way that you want it uh, with your cursor over top of the pattern you want to right click 
and you want to go ahead and export your pattern to CSQ. And what this will do is it will put it into, uh, it'll enable you to save it and, and then uh, put it into the preview area. So this is the, 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 the bid pattern that I have already done and it's part of the project. So we're going to go and create our bib. In order to do that, the first thing you do is use repeat pattern to place it onto the screen. This is our outline for the bib. We're going to do a similar pattern to what we did for uh, the burp cloth. So we're going to start by creating two echoes and this time we're going to use an outside echo of 0.25 echo. 0.25 and because the bib is a little bit smaller and some of the areas are a little bit smaller than the burp cloth I'm going to do an inside echo of 0.25 also instead of 0.5 and again we're going to use a negative number in order to create that inside echo in place echo pattern so now we have our two echoes now the second the inside echo that is highlighted is going to be our path. Again, we are going to scroll down and select Janice's swag that's rotated and small. And with our pattern highlighted, we'll right click and say apply pattern. And it's thinking about it. So some patterns will not meet nicely at points and corners. And you can see that some of our, our swags are not quite um, smooth. And one, of, one option you can do is to divide the path pattern into segments using the node mode. Um, and then just apply the point to point pattern to each seg segment separately. Or the applied pattern can be adjusted using the node mode. And that's what I've done here, or what, what I will do. So let's see. see if I can select this. Now because there's so many patterns here, again, they're all overlapped, so um, you have to use the, the less than and greater keys in order to toggle through the patterns. So let's see, there we go. There's the first one that I want to manipulate and we'll just smooth this out a little bit. Grab the blue one. And I think that looks better. So using again, let's toggle over the less than and greater keys. And we'll fix this other one. This one, uh, this, the shape of this pattern caused the apply to kind of manipulate things in the corner areas, unlike the burp cloth. So let's see if there's any more. I think there's a couple more. Oops, the wrong way. Let's zoom in. Make our adjustments. Sometimes you have to zoom in quite a ways in order to grab those nodes and manipulate them. Okay, 
but I'm pretty happy with that. And there is our outline of the bib. So the next thing we want to do again is use point-to-point -point line in order to draw, this time we're going to draw horizontal lines using the CAD again. Uh, we want to have two sets of double lines, so we're going to do this. And again, we're going to use three quarters of an inch, three of those quarter inch squares to leave room for our sashing. And I am left clicking, dragging, left clicking, and then right clicking uh, to create each individual line. And, and it, you stay in the function of draw a line until you right click again to get out of it. So now we're going to place the sashing, and this time we'll do the sailboats for a little boy. I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to expand it so that it will fit in here. And then using uh, repeat patterns again, we're going to place the anchor design. And it will need to be resized and rotated. And I don't want it um, leaning, so I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. So it will stand up straight. Resize it. Oops, there we go again. There we go. Make sure it's centered. And there is your completed bib pattern. This is what the completed project looks like. View grid, let's take the grid off. And, and again, in order to finish it, I use stippling to go around the anchor, but that is optional. And then I used, I cut along the cutting line and used the stitching line in order to be able to apply the binding. So this is what our completed project looks like. Uh, have fun and get creative and you can come up with all kinds of different themes for um, baby burp cloths and, and bibs. And they make a great gift. Thank you so much.